Have you ever misplaced your keys and been frustrated at the sheer stupidity of the situation? Have you ever misplaced your dog and wondered, where's Fido wandered off to now? Have you ever lost your car in a parking lot and thought, how does an idiot lose something that big? Well, at the end of the day, losing things is only human. And unless St. Anthony has anything to say about it, you'll just have to wait until it turns up. Sometimes it can take months, sometimes years, and sometimes you never find it at all. Losing things is annoying and makes us feel stupid, but at least you didn't lose a 19,000 long ton, 542 foot long bolt cargo ship. Come to think of it, it would take a very large couch cushion to make such a mistake. The USS Cyclops was a Proteus-class collier built for and lost by the US Navy around March 4th, 1918, exactly 98 years before the release of Zootopia in theaters. The vessel was designed with her class to carry coal, manganese, and anything else they wanted under 80,000 tons. She was intended to serve in this capacity for the duration of World War I, as long as the Germans didn't have anything to say about it. Now, one disappearing ship isn't exactly rare, but what's particularly curious is that out of four ships, three of her class would vanish without a trace. The only one remaining being the USS Jupiter, but we'll get there. In the early 1900s, steamships ran on a beautiful, lesser-known ore called coal, and that led to a bit of friendly, or not so friendly, competition over coal sources. It basically came down to who has the best coal. Most European empires had a somewhat stable supply, whether from their colonies, from their allies, or from Nigeria. Places like Germany had their own coal mines within their borders, and the Brits were ready to exploit some Welsh coal to fuel their fleet. The United States didn't want to seem left behind, so they built the Great White Fleet. Honestly, some of the most beautiful ships to ever grace the seas. One problem though, American coal, while decent, is not nearly as potent as a lot of other places. This shouldn't ever become a problem, says America, still Monroe doctrining. America's fleet requires a lot of coal, and it's probably its biggest setback, because it meant America couldn't be entirely self-sufficient. Don't worry, Mid-South, your coal is still great for home boilers and factories, just not for national defense. Yeah, like they're gonna use these for national defense. America's Navy needed some transport ships for more than just coal anyway, so they decided to go and get some. These ships are called colliers, and they were designed specifically to carry ore cargo, to function entirely on transportation. They weren't particularly interesting in their function, but their vitality cannot be understated. Coal didn't just run the massive engines of ships, it also produced the steam that ran steering. So if you run out of coal, there's a decent possibility it's every man for himself. British colliers would go up and down the coast, bringing coal to all vital ports of Britain. And America said, Dad has the right idea. Enter the Proteus class, four cargo vessels designed to sustain the Great White Fleet through the great global war that America definitely won't be involved in. These vessels had enormous cargo holds and were loaded with cranes. Although technically meant to carry coal, they didn't discriminate and carried anything the Allies wanted them to, even troops. Now some of these vessels served longer than others, but some don't have too much to talk about in terms of career, so we'll be discussing that a little faster than usual. All came from the Newport News shipyard in Virginia and had very similar specs of design around 520 to 540 feet in length and about 19,000 long tons of displacement here or there. History.com says the USS Cyclops was the largest ship in the American fleet, but it says that literally nowhere else, so I'm adding that to the long list of reasons why History.com is for suckers. The USS Cyclops is our first ship to discuss. Launched in May of 1910 and out in the field by November, her early days were spent in the Baltic Sea, supplying ships and making America look good. She was moved to operate on the American East Coast wherever they needed her, and during the totally not forgotten about American occupation of Vera Cruz, she called and supplied ships to assist in the operation, even carrying refugees out of a very tense diplomatic situation between the US and Mexico. With America's entry into World War I, she was commissioned entirely for transportation and ran a route to France, traveling all over the Atlantic with new assignments, going from Brazil to Nova Scotia. One thing I have to discuss, however, is her lunatic of a captain, George Worley. Following the disappearance of the Cyclops, the U.S. Naval Office looked into her captain's background and discovered he was actually a man named Johann Friedrich Wickman, born in Lower Saxony. In Germany. He was a German-born man captaining an American ship against German-born men captaining German ships. As it turns out, he was born in 1862, and when he was 16, he illegally migrated to America by ditching the ship he was working on while docked in San Francisco, changing his name to Worley and buying a saloon. He later became ship's master on numerous merchant vessels, and was discovered to be unusually cruel to his crew, and was known to act, well, let's just say it wasn't pleasant. One time, he chased a junior officer around the deck with a pistol. That's fun. He was also known to walk around the ship performing his duties in nothing but long underwear and a derby hat. And Wikipedia calls this his saner times. 
This was him being sane. The worst of it is that on numerous occasions he was accused of pro-German sentiment. Which I mean, given his background and the fact that literally all of his friends were German or of German descent, it seems a bit likely. He denied it and got furious at many points with all of the accusations. Anyway, back to whatever this video is called. Now the USS Cyclops was designed to carry a lot of heavy ore, but when she was assigned to do manganese shipments from Brazil, her captain got a bit overconfident. Although probably not entirely his fault, the ship's cargo holds were overloaded with ore at 10,000 tons when she could only carry 8,000. Before departure, the captain filed a report with the Navy that one of the cylinders on the vessel was cracked and thus unoperational, and a group doing a survey confirmed this. But in the process, they also hastily confirmed that the overloaded cargo was totally fine and secured to be sent off on the rough seas on an eight-year-old ship with a partly broken engine. Oh, and their route was to take them through the Bermuda Triangle. If this is starting to line up like a Dateline episode to you, then good. The unthinkable happened. After a brief stop in Barbados, the ship never arrived in Maryland and was never heard from again. Brief searches were conducted and have been since, but nothing's been found. I know you'll be quick to comment about ancient curses and the Bermuda Triangle, but the truth is the ship's eye beams were dangerously corroded from acidic cargo, which could have caused a major structural collapse. Also, with all the wet canvas covering manganese in a storm, the shifting ore could cause a list to port or starboard, causing her to capsize. The cracked cylinder wasn't doing her any favors either. Whatever the cause, it ended up being the worst loss of life for the US Navy outside of combat. And today, her mystery still intrigues us all. Despite numerous underwater searches along her route and one guy claiming to have seen her sailing off Virginia shortly before she vanished, there has been no success in finding any sign of her. Many ships have disappeared before, but there's usually some indication of their loss, like the RMS Naronic going missing and numerous notes and bottles being discovered. Could the Germans have sunk her? Well, German U-boats went pretty far out in the Atlantic, but not one ever claimed to be responsible for her foundering. It wouldn't have been wrong to have sunk her, so they wouldn't have covered it up if they had. Germany probably wasn't responsible. Today, the Cyclops has been remembered through her memorials and crappy YouTube documentaries. But what's equally noted is her legacy by her younger sisters. Transition. Now by the chronology of when these ships were launched and commissioned, I should talk about the USS Jupiter next, as it was launched in August of 1912. But it was the only ship of her class not to vanish, so we'll go over her story last. With that in mind, next we have the third ship of the Proteus class. The, uh, USS Proteus. Launched in September of 1912, the Proteus was the lead ship of her class, and after completion, she zoomed out of Norfolk, Virginia, bound for Mexico, to call the American warships hanging out in Veracruz. Afterwards, she did four runs to the Philippines, no sweat. Like the Cyclops, she too did runs around Rio de Janeiro, and during the war she ran all around the American East Coast, spending a long time coaling ships off the coast of Wales. Post-war, she did almost exclusively Caribbean runs from Norfolk, Virginia, until around 1920 when she started traveling to future Ben Affleck movie set, Pearl Harbor. In 1923, she was sent way back up to New England to surface areas around Rhode Island. In the end, however, I know what you're really here for. After being sold to the Canadian Merchant Fleet, she serviced Quebecians for years all the way up to World War II, until she disappeared in November of 1941 running the same route as her sister the Cyclops met her fate on. And yes, it did happen in the Bermuda Triangle. No conspiracy theories are to be tolerated on my channel, however. Much like the Cyclops, she disappeared without a trace. No signs, no wreckage, no words, and no evidence of where she could possibly be, having last been seen on November 12th. Some have also suggested the Germans could have sunk her, but no U-boats ever claimed her, and U-boats loved claiming vessels they sank. It was a matter of pride. This isn't something the Germans would cover up, especially because they would have had every right to sink an enemy warship. This isn't like the Lusitania. Germany totally would have claimed the sinking, and although the Allies wouldn't have been happy about it, it wouldn't be a war crime if they were responsible. Regardless, the Proteus vanished, and to this day, we still got nothing. The final ship of the class is the USS Nehrus, a fairly obscure cargo ship with not too much info on her routes. She served in the Atlantic fleet in the same capacity as her sisters, mostly transporting coal and whatever else to and from ports in the Caribbean back up to Norfolk, Virginia. The war was uneventful for her, and in 1922 she was laid up in Norfolk to be decommissioned, sitting there alone in a float all the way to the outbreak of World War II in Europe. In 1940, she was struck from the naval list and sold to the Aluminum Company of Canada, based in Canada. She now carried bauxite ore, bauxite being a fantastic source of aluminum, which would be used to build planes for the war effort. 
America's aluminum plants were happy to capitalize on America's war needs. So the vessel ran from the Caribbean to the U.S. once again so her sweet, sweet cargo could be utilized by the Yankees. She was still under Canada's flag, though. She departed St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands and was last seen on December 10, 1940, vanishing once again on the same route as the Cyclops and the Proteus. Only difference being, we're pretty sure she didn't sink in the Bermuda Triangle, and many naval enthusiasts believe she was sunk by a German torpedo. But that once again has the whole pride thing for Germany. No U-boats claim her. Where'd she go? No one knows. If this is starting to feel familiar to you, it should. The vessel was eaten by the sea, and no sign of her was ever seen again. The second vessel of the class that I put off talking about until now is the USS Jupiter, launched in August of 1912 and commissioned in April of 1913. She was a truly incredible vessel. Firstly, what's unique about Jupiter is that her engine was absolutely bonkers for its day, utilizing two turboelectric engines for its propellers, which together weighed 124 tons less than the steam turbine engines found on the Cyclops. She averaged about 14 knots, only one knot less than her sisters. It was pure insanity. She first served in the Pacific Fleet, unlike her sisters, and stood on standby throughout the Veracruz Crisis. On Columbus Day, she became the first ship to pass from the Pacific to the Atlantic via the Panama Canal. She was transferred to the Atlantic Fleet and was based at Norfolk like her sisters, and in the war carried the first American aviators to Europe. She did some transatlantic coal transport there too, and fortunately didn't meet the same fate as the Cyclops. After the war in 1919, she was taken in at Hampton Roads, Virginia, and was authorized to be converted into America's very first aircraft carrier, being renamed the USS Langley, and performing many feats of aviation for the US Navy, setting standards, setting records, and serving many. Although Japan claims the first commissioned aircraft carrier ever, America came less than one year later, making it not the first, but one of the first. Langley would carry everything from biplanes to P-40 Warhawks. She was docked in the Philippines during the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and when the Japanese invaded the island, she sped away to the Dutch East Indies where Japan would certainly not invade. Australia sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? Chandra's line thinks so. USS Langley joined a convoy going towards the Indian Ocean bound for British Sri Lanka. However, the vessel was pulled to instead go to the island of Java to deliver some planes. She had a rendezvous with the USS Whipple and USS Edsall, but while meeting up, Japanese reconnaissance planes found them and soon they gave them hell. 16 Japanese bombers decimated the formation, and the Langley took quite a few hits. With 16 casualties, a damaged flight deck, and a flooding engine room, the captain ordered an abandoned ship, later having her scuttled by torpedo, bringing the final conclusion. The final vessel of the Proteus class laid to rest on the ocean floor. Today, the USS Langley is remembered for her innovation, but her mysterious sisters must not be forgotten. All that we know is that three ships went missing, and unfortunately, none of the three have any significant chance of being found. Efforts to locate the wrecks have sort of stalled, and their fate is sort of old news to the Admiralty. It's a shame that such historic vessels would meet such a grim end, but I'm glad there are still people who have their minds focused on locating the final tombs of true American heroes, all but forgotten. I'd like to thank JCB Stauffer 2 for the suggestion of doing a video on the USS Cyclops. I had no clue that it'd lead me down a rabbit hole to cover the entire class, and now because of you, I'm thinking of making a video on the Great White Fleet, so thanks. For everyone else, I take suggestions. In the past, I've said it takes a whole lot for me to come up with video ideas, and that's not a lie. I appreciate your support. But anywho, what did we learn? Never trust a saloon-owning German sea captain wearing long underwear and a derby hat while pretending to be an American. It's sort of specific advice, but if it helps one person, it'll all be worth it.